Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. It's been a while since I made this type of a video. I mean, to be truth, to be truthful with you, folks. Uh, you know, I try to keep things honest on this channel. Now, I'm not trying to tell you guys all my personal business, but I will tell you this. I mean, I I just got I got back about a month or so ago from North and South Dakota. I had a wonderful time. Went to a lot of wonderful places. <clears throat> and and around out early next year, uh, depending on what my finances look like, I do plan to uh, take a trip out west, primarily to the southwest. And then next summer, I would like to visit some of the places in the Northern West. But as you guys know, traveling is very costly. If you don't know that, take my word, it's costly, it is expensive. Even though I sleep in my van when I travel, it saves me a ton of money because I don't gotta worry about hotel expenses. You know, the gas that I consume making these kind of videos the gas that I have to, the gas that I have to use just to get to some of these locations from where I currently reside, that in itself costs money. Then of course I got you know, I got the vehicle maintenance and all that fun stuff. So, you know, on this channel, every so often, I might make a video to where. You know, I encourage you people to be financially responsible. I encourage people to participate in their own life. I mean, we all can sit around and cry about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the government. We can point fingers at politicians and point fingers at whoever we, we want to point fingers at. But I'm a firm believer that at the end of the day, I would say for the majority of us, the, you know, the way our lives end up is within our own control. I would say in most cases, uh, we are our own worst enemy. So with that being said, you know, I sat down with my, uh, I mean, I sat down, I looked at my bank accounts and I also sat down and I had a, a conversation with my financial advisor. We were discussing my retirement plans and what I should do, where my money should be invested and all that fun stuff. And make a long story short, when I walked out of, when I walked out of his office, I was feeling some kind of way. I mean, I, I mean clearly I wasn't mad at nobody because you know, it's you know, it's my life, it's my money, it's my resources, and it's up to me to be responsible and do what's necessary for for my best interest uh, concerning my future. So, with all that being said, am I gonna still be doing traveling videos? You bet your ass I am. However, I'm gonna do you know a different type of traveling video now the videos like I've been doing on this channel for the most part yes I will continue to do those videos I enjoy those videos I love making them and I know you people that continue to return and watch them also enjoy those videos now to be honest with you people I kind of took a little bit of time off of doing any type of gig work because I wanted to take that time to build this YouTube channel up to where I could hopefully make enough money to where I can live off the of YouTube money and that's it. But honestly, I jumped the gun a little too much. I got a little too ahead of myself. And honestly, in a way, I put the carriage in front of the horse. So, but fortunately, I was able to catch myself before it was too late. So, yeah, like I said, 
I was feeling some kind of way when I walked out of the office of my financial advisor. I mean, you know, I was feeling like, I was feeling like I was living a irresponsible lifestyle. So that's the reason why you guys see me do more videos of me door dashing. And I will be doing videos of me doing other gig, app, gig apps. Because, you know, the reality of the matter is my channel is not big enough to where I can just focus on YouTube solely and live off of the proceeds. I mean, yes, my overhead is extremely low, but it's not low enough to where I can afford to not have to work a occupation in conjunction to me building this YouTube channel. Because I'm 44 years old. I'm not a spring chicken. I'm not in my 30s. I don't got time to try this and try that. And in the midst of doing this trial and error lifestyle, I'm not out here, you know, doing some type of work to where my income is a little bit more stable. And at this point, it's a little more than what I get paid currently on YouTube. So I say all this to say, like I said, I mean, you know, that's the reason why I decided to go back to door dashing. I mean, before I was doing it every so often, but I'm doing it more frequently now. I'm doing it more or less like a nine to five job to where I'm working eight hours a day, five days or so a week. And I got some other gig apps I'm gonna try and, it, and I will be having those videos on this channel as well and if you guys want to help me out you can give videos like this a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet you can also go to my uh, gig work diary I got another I got a new channel it's called gig work diary so you can go to my other channel, Gig Work Diary. And you can go ahead and subscribe to that channel. And you can also give the videos on that channel a thumbs up if you desire. And it's that you can help me out. As you can see on my other channel, I put up content that solely deals with gig work for those that might want to watch gig work videos only now for everybody else that likes watching my drive around videos like this one obviously this channel is going to continue to this channel is not going over it's going to stay up and I will continue to upload on it so yeah just a little bit of reality that I had to come to terms with and a little bit of honesty to those of you that follow me. That's the reason why I'm doing door dashing. And, and this is the reason why you will be seeing more videos of me doing other gig work. Because I figure with me doing gig work, it, it allows me the freedom to travel whenever I, to travel where and whenever I wanna travel. And even when I travel, to other locations I can still go there and and work I don't have to miss a bunch of time off of work because I choose to travel so yeah and, and again for those of you that are looking at building a YouTube channel I mean and another thing about myself is you know I also understand that yeah there's other youtubers out here that they channels growing quicker than mine you know they're probably more creative than I am I mean I'm not down I'm not down talking myself I'm just being realistic but I do what I do over here and how I do it I mean I try to keep this channel interesting I try to make my videos as informative as I can and whatever opinions I have about an area that I drive through, I put it on this channel too, because that's one of the reasons why I began this channel. 
for those of you that are just tuning into this channel uh, I typically do a lot of traveling to smaller and mid-sized cities and I also do a lot of traveling through small towns as well I don't really get into the super big metro areas it's not my thing I try to travel through areas that are smaller to mid-size that's basically what this channel is about for the most part so yeah I'm not so yeah so yeah I will be putting more videos out like this I will be doing I'm still gonna continue to travel it's just that I'm gonna have to you know work a little more which means like I told you I'll be putting out more videos like the videos I've been putting out with all that uh, fun stuff okay that's all right now that I'm now that I got it off my chest uh, as the title of the video suggests I am driving through Valley City North Dakota which is located in Barnes County located it is located in the southeast region of the state of North Dakota it is an hour east of Fargo and 35 minutes west of uh, Jamestown which that video will be coming up next so stay tuned for it and Valley City North Dakota was founded in 1884 it currently has a population of 6,575 people and the population has a 0.2% decline as of the 2020 census and as of 2021 the population had an additional decline of another 0.2% totaling a population decline of not even a half percent so I would say for the most part the population here is relatively stagnant I mean the amount of population loss here is barely enough for them to even measure the population right now sits at 6,559 people I mean as of the, as of the 2021 uh, as of 2021 that's what the population is 6,559 people and this city has been losing people since the 1980 census now recent now at first when it began losing people it was losing people at a clip of five and six percent per census year which the census year is every 10 years now in more recent times the population loss might be maybe one or two percent not not any substantial loss but nevertheless uh, this city has been losing people since the 1980 census. The city has a nickname of <clears throat> this city has nickname of the city of bridges due to the many bridges over the over the Shanty River, including the Highline Railroad River. I'm a railroad bridge, I'm sorry. And of course, you have Valley State University that's located here, hence the name of the university. The city's present name was named, was due to the city's location in the valley of the uh, Shane River, of the Shaney River. The city's old name was Worthington named after George Worthington, the town's uh, promoter at the time. And if you want to live here, your median rent price is 640 to 1280 a month. Your median home price is going to be 163000 However, there's plenty of houses that are currently for sale for real below 163 grand. There's one house for sale for lower 65 now granted some of your lower price houses are going to need a little bit of work so 
So just bear that in mind and, and add that to your budget. We're gonna look at some of your cheaper homes. Violent crime is below national average. That's good. Your property crime is average, which honestly that's still that's still good. I mean, you compare many other uh, cities, big or small, in other parts of the country, they have property crime well above national. And your racial demographic, your race demographics are going to be 91% white, 13% black, 1.8% Native American, and 2.5% Hispanic. And I will say, if you want to live here in Bali, I mean, if you're the kind of person that likes certain amenities or you need certain amenities of a larger city such as Fargo, in this case, just understand that come winter time, you know, I've made plenty of my North Dakota videos. I've discussed the climate in this region. So if you want to live in, so if you want to live here, suggesting is, like I like I said before, uh, if you can, come here and rent before you purchase. And and my and my suggestion would be to rent. And then after you've been here for two or three months of winter weather, like maybe after being here from for January and February and maybe March and then April comes you you think you're ready to buy something or you want to buy something okay I wish you the best of luck but or two if you come here and you're from a neighboring state like South Dakota Minnesota or even Wisconsin or Montana or uh, yeah or Wyoming where the climate in those states are very similar to what you get up here. I mean, maybe not quite as bad, but not far off. Then I would say come here and do what you do. But if you're coming here and you're from a climate that's significantly different, uh, I would say don't buy a house here right away. Live up here and deal with a couple of months of winter weather because after you deal with a couple of months of winter you will be able to make a much more sound decision on whether you want to live here in North Dakota or not and obviously they do get a fair amount of snow in this region of, of North Dakota I mean there's times that the winter storms here are so bad that they have to close down the, all the major freeways. Like they might, you know, they might have to close down uh, 94 and, and they might have to close down Interstate 29 because the winter weather gets so bad in this region of the country. So I say all this to say, if you don't mind long, cold and harsh winters, and you enjoy, but and, and you don't mind your summers being short-lived, but however you enjoy the mild summer weather up here, as I've discussed on plenty of other videos I made in North Dakota, then I would say come up here, check it out. I mean, I don't think it's a bad place to live at all, provided that you're a colder weather kind of person. I don't think it's a bad place to live. I mean, you're, you're, you're within an hour of Fargo. Now, obviously, during the winter time, uh, you, you're gonna wanna bear, I mean, you're gonna wanna bear in mind the winter weather that's up here. So if you're wanting to move here and maybe your job is in Fargo, you might wanna, you might wanna keep that thought in the back of your head the thought of the winter weather here but other than that it's not a bad place to live I mean it appears to be a nice quiet and clean city I mean housing 
the housing here is very affordable as you guys learned a little bit ago when I was reading off the housing prices so that's all I gotta say on this one I mean I was let you guys enjoy the rest of the trip and I think as what you guys see on the trip here will be pretty much self-explanatory. Like I said, I can't think of anything crazy that has happened around here. I mean, it just seems like a solid place to call home if you don't mind the North Dakota climate. All right, folks. Y'all know what to do at this point, so... Enjoy the rest of the video and I'll check you later.